Guys, look at that, eh? You came oh, yeah. together Wednesday night. I think the secret is you guys, uh, Thursdays, it's harder to get your shit together. Wednesdays, you guys are nailing it. Yeah, we're on nailing it, it. We're all on the it. time. Thank you very much for uh, everyone at home for joining us for Live from the Dutch Hall. We are coming to you on a rare, rare Wednesday night because our director, Tyler Shazma, has shit to do. He's going to Kingston to entertain the people. He needs to get on the, on the road and do what he does. Roots. So we thought instead of uh, trying to get an inferior director to our program, we would uh, accommodate young Shazma. 
in his quest to make our show better. And then tonight we build this episode as uh, Pete makes amends. And uh, I believe that I have to, you know, I haven't really come clean with a lot of people at home there. Uh, really, I have simple goals in life. I have simple goals. I just want to be fed. I just want to keep a nice, clean roof over my head, you know, dry and such. A roof? A roof, if you will. If you're a fancy guy, <laughs> maybe a roof. That's what I like to do. But uh, you know what? Also, I like to become the greatest uh, uh, late-night talk show host in Canadian history. And I don't think that's any big deal. No, no big legit. deal. So big what deal. I've done is I started in a pool shed, and then I, I kept uh, uh, doing different things until... Now I go out to look at my beautiful building, the Spiky Ball Studios' this church that I purchased to make an actual production studio for the program that I just started in my head with the thing. And then I look in the parking lot, it's full of people, and I come to a realization uh, I might be a little bit of, a, of, a, of, a, of an asshole here in this whole bit, uh, in this whole thing. <laughs> I think I might have taken advantage of a whole bunch of people in order for my own like a crazy dream that I cooked up in my head here, and I need to make amends for this. You might say, and Pete, you know, you've done a lot of terrible things in your life. It's not just this one thing that you want. To, why this one are you going to apologize for? Why not apologize for the time you spend away from your wife and children pursuing the quest of telling dick, dick jokes to angry uh, drunks? In bars that don't want to hear that, your jokes, you know? <laughs> Why do you do that instead of, like, uh, love and nurture your family? Huh? Yeah. Huh? 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 No, that's another episode. We're not doing it in this one. This one is for, for me to look at the people that are in this room making this show happen. The Nocturnal Emissions, the greatest band in Canadian <laughs> late night history. Yeah! Just Paul Caleb. Van Dyke, the bartender of this Polly. program. Yeah, Polly. And the cast and crew, which I can't even begin to say. We got uh, Jordan Gortva, Jordy. Tyler Shazma, yeah. Amanda Rose Grant, Woo. and Jane, Dr. Jane, if you will. <laughs> Van Dyke. We got all these people. I need to apologize to each and every one of them individually, but there's only one way to do it. And that's we got to get this show started. So how are we going to do it? We're going to say... That's right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the greatest band of Canadian late night history. The Nocturnal Emissions comprise this week of our band leader, Michael Bow. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Our rhythm and vocals. Beside him, the man that writes the music for the show, the former member of the Nocturnal Emissions, Dave the Rooster Shiners, everyone. Yeah. And in the corner, it's our CRTC required Frenchman, the French tickler on drums, hey. Kevin Belanger. That's the balls. Whiskey West Higgins, everyone. And playing that magic on the guitar. That's our unrequired, reluctant German. Steve's a reluctant German, everyone. Thank Peter. you very much. That was fun, eh? That was fun. That's that was how you a good fun show. opener. That's right? high energy, eh? Yeah. yeah, it was good energy. Can't and lose. you know what I like? I'm down on the same level as you guys. Before I thought it was oh, important, yeah. the old Pete, I'm going to call it the old Pete before I've made these amends that have caused me to be where I am today with you guys on this show. You know, like uh, coming to this realization how terrible I've been to you. Yeah. Well, you were blocking chairs before, but I actually enjoyed that. 
That oh, was the sorry. Part. I was, the best I was like, about it was not seeing him. I thought you could maybe see all of us. I can see Kev now, too. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Kev. Hello. Hey, Kev in the corner. <laughs> You're on our level. Yeah. It's weird. We're going to raise Kev up, though, because I'd like to see Kev up near the ceiling, you know? Yeah. Just <laughs> raining down drums on you. Heavy beats. Yeah. I think that's going to be the coolest up. thing. We're going to make a big riser for Kev. <laughs> so, and we're probably going to end up... Uh, Kev, a different color light for you? Are you thinking, or are you, uh, what, are you happy to just blend into the background, or do you want to be showcased on the top of the Nocturnal Emissions? Just, bl just blend me in. Blend me into the background. It'll be good. Wes, you're the balls. Who do you think the cock of the Nocturnal Emissions is? <laughs> Does he have no microphone? <laughs> We're going to have to get... Can it be anybody other than old cockhead himself? <laughs> <laughs> who, who is that? Charters? Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, it, it really it is. A, it's a no-brainer. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay, Kev. Don't worry about it. It's going to set me up for a joke I wrote for later in the show, too. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was my fault. And uh, uh, anyways, I got this whole thing <laughs> planned out. I forgot where I was. I got screwed up because... Uh, <laughs> Saw something shiny. Yeah, I am really like a. <laughs> You're down on our level. Yeah, it's it's you different. Can see everyone, everyone welcome. Now. Yeah, I'm You're usually way above us. You want to put Kev up on a pedestal? Give him a different colored light. Yes, but yeah. then because I used to be up on this pedestal, it's not all it's cracked up to be Kev. When I was up on this pedestal over here, you know, I was putting myself above all you yeah. people. I'm not just a fan because of drum I spun. What? I'm not a fan of drum risers. You're not. I was. There was a time, but no. I, I love stages where the drummer is on the same level as the amps. What about if he's in front? The drummer in front. Nah. <laughs> I like how Kev talks to me while braiding his hair. It's <laughs> it's like something I didn't expect expect all the time. He's, he's the only one in the band that can do. He's that. He's the only one that can do that, yeah. and it's really something that For you know what? I might as well get Kev's apology out of the way first. Kev, I don't appreciate your multi-talented, your skills that you bring to the show. No, actually, you know what? I'm not going to even do that. I'm going to tell you my original rules I made for this show, and I'm going to stick to it, because that's what I do. It's live from the Dutch Hall, for fuck's sakes. We do what we want. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go by the order of people that uh, uh, came to the show, right? So when you appeared on our show, you then get a... Uh, I will apologize to you based on the order of your appearance on the show. You know what I mean? Chronologically? Chronologically, yeah. For example, Jordan Gortva, who's working in the booth there. Hey, Jordan. Jordan. Jordan's probably the last guy that's come to the show, right? So therefore, I would apologize to Jordan first, right? <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> and then... Uh, Dave, he came to the show. <laughs> you were the first one on the first episode, right? Yeah. I apologize to you uh, last. Well, right? hopefully we run out of time. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, so uh, that's the kind of the, how the show is going to work. And somewhere in the middle, we'll get to feedback. We got feedback. And that's our show, people. That's it. Simple progress, Paul, right? Simple. No big deal. We know how this is going. I don't know about this. Yo, how many times have you hit yourself in the mouth today? <laughs> yeah. I like it. I can't get that thing out without hitting myself in the mouth. And I've done it on stage like a hundred times where I go right up, put my face into it, and then pull it out and hit it myself in the face. It's like it's a bit, but it's not a bit. It's just how stupid I am for real. That is really how dumb I am. <laughs> Paul noticed. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> He's Paul's enjoyed it his whole, yep. my whole life. He's like, oh, they call this brother the smart one. <laughs> and he fucking, uh, he's seen him walk into the wall a hundred times. The guy's an idiot. <laughs> right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Me and Paul, Paul will tell me, Pete, you got to do this for me. And it's like, I got to go from A to B, right? So I go from like A to Z. I go take a walk around Q and W and, you know, like uh, do all this shit. And I eventually get to B, right? And then I'm like, what's your problem? And Paul's like, you're an idiot. You Why know, why'd you do all that other stuff in the middle? Just get to the fucking thing where it gets done. I'm like, yeah, but I don't know. That's how I thought it had to be done. It was the only way my brain worked. It's some weird way to get to it, you know? It's not good. They call, they call it, like, that's not smart. That's dumb, 
right? That's the opposite of smart. And then, the, so it just depends on the circumstance, right, Dave? It all depends on your perspective. Yeah. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, because uh, you you come across uh, knowledgeable in a lot of ways, right, Dave? <laughs> uh, if you say so. <laughs> I guess yep. sometimes I do, yeah. Good at math. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, you're yeah. good at math, yeah. My kids would consider me knowledgeable in mathematics. Ma big math guy. Big math guy. And uh, that helps you in life a lot, right? Well, when I'm at the grocery store looking at sales, <laughs> you bet. <laughs> you bet. Fuck, man. If Charters was ever on the prices, right, like, uh, he'd probably be, he'd probably kick, cook at it. I've done There's my homework. This, this is not even a, I'm not fucking around, and, and I don't know how many times I have to tell you to convince you this, if I have to buy a hundred churches to convince you of this, Charters. <laughs> but I'm not fucking around with this program, and I got an idea for another television program for you to be on, and it's based on a British program called Eight Out of Ten Cats Prefer Countdown. Have you ever seen it online? As a matter of fact, I haven't ever seen it. You haven't ever seen it? Nope. No. I, I'd love to be able to challenge you on this because I'm pretty fucking sure I showed you an episode of this to show you this idea already. But we are both wasted drunk. <laughs> Back so, in the old hall one time? <laughs> yeah. I'm giving you a pass yeah. on well, it. Well, you could be right. But it is probably what happened. I'm just saying. <laughs> I wish I was more positive about it, but I'm such a drinker, I can't pin it down that I've yeah. actually done this. A bit gray. God damn it. Now that you mention it, I've, uh, something hazy is coming back yeah. to me. But anyways, it's based on this old British show called Countdown, right? And it's, a countdown is just like an old, like, old lady game like you'd play in the newspaper where you get like a bunch of letters. They just draw the letters out of like a bin or whatever. And then like you got to make, out of consonants and vowels, you got to just make as many, you just make as many words as you can, or what? No, the longest word, the most letters word. Oh, yeah. The longest word, right? And then they do the thing with numbers where they just pull, like, there's so many big numbers, so many small numbers, and then they pull up all the numbers, and then you have to make an equation to make the big number they put on the top. Oh, it's like Out a of brain the numbers, test. Yeah. Huh? It's like a brain test? It's kind of like a brain test. It's a little puzzle thing, you know? Oh, yeah. I figure you would be magical at it because you're so good at that sort of bullshit that nobody <laughs> cares. cares about, right? <laughs> I do like puzzles. You are good at that stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, Dave's good at if you go to a bar. Like, when we were young, we'd go to a bar with Charters, and Charters would, uh, uh, he would just sit there and, uh, uh, like, anything that was, like, uh, didn't require, like, athletic ability, but it required, like, just somebody with a lot of time to focus on some bullshit. <laughs> Charters was magic at it. He was great at it. Like, he was good at darts. He was good at, like, uh, you know, like, a pool. You know, you're pretty good at pool. Shuffleboard, yeah. even? Yeah, shuffleboard, you do that. If you could do this, uh, uh, like, a, a trick with a cigarette pack... David, this trick, you can make a nickel go up through a cigarette pack. Remember that trick, Dave? Hell yeah. <laughs> the guy would, but anything you could do, like that little thing they eat. If you ever hang around Asians in a classroom, and you see Asians just flipping that thing on their uh, thumb, and you think, they must have an extra thumb, those Asians, because I can't fucking flip that thing like those guys do. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen an Asian flipping a pen on his thumb? You know it, Dave. <laughs> I know damn well you it's know it. It's not just Asians. Who, it's Charters does it too. It's Asians and one Polish guy. That's who does it. And I've seen him because you watch those Asian guys do it. I, maybe it was just a time period thing. When in high school, we had a lot of guys coming from Hong Kong because it was going to go back to being communist again. And they're all scared they came to my high school, I guess. And then... Uh, <laughs> and then uh, a lot of them were flipping these pens around on their thumb. I never seen anything like it. It's just like it was defied gravity. I tried doing it, just flip uh, <laughs> pens across the room. Exactly. It didn't work worth a shit. You figured it out. Those are the kind of goals that I set for myself. I see something <laughs> like that, and I make it a goal to do that. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. I practice it until I do it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You have that kind of a brain. It's, it, it can accomplish anything. <laughs> But mostly you just choose stupid things to accomplish. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you could only get a brain that would think of better things to accomplish. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm not apologizing for that because that's not harsh. Plus it's not the end of the show yet. No. 
And you're the last guy I'm going to apologize to. But I got to tell you, you know who's been a big part of uh, the reason why this show even happened? Is the cheese lady. Oh. Yep. Goddamn straight. It's time for her. One, two, three. Go check in on the cheese lady. Not time. Oh, sorry. We're, too We're not bad. checking. We do that when we start feedback. <laughs> Or as I like to say, a segment we call feedback. We got feedback. We got feedback. It's feedback. It's motherfucking feedback. It is motherfucking feedback. Uh, this segment is brought to you, as always, by our friends at Amazon. If you'd like to uh, go to uh, our website, livefromthedutchhall.com, and uh, what you want to do if you don't see any Amazon banners to click on, it's because your ad blockers are on. Uh, so shut them off, just or give our site a pass for this one thing, so you can give us money. I gotta tell you, this month we got another fucking check. Hey yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah we I did. don't know why I swear with that. I gotta make this a little bit better because we have a real sponsor with Clean Flow. They want us to keep it a little bit uh, better for the uh, CRTC. Is that the clean flow thing now? Yeah, it is. So it's got. a jingle. Is that what they're paying for? Dave's been working on it. <laughs> That's what they paid for, Dave. <laughs> clean flow pays for that. <laughs> they're the only real sponsor we have right now. Most of our other sponsors, Amazon paid us, so I can't, can't say that. They paid us twice it, this year already. That's pretty awesome. Holy shit. And this check was twice as big as the last one. Really? That's what I'm talking about. Thanks, Things are listeners. skyrocketing for life in the Dutch Hall. It Double is or unbelievable. Nothing. We're into almost like a couple hundred bucks Woo. per check. No, not wanting to rub it in. <laughs> we are fucking. R I'm just wanting to lie in my check, just rub it on my nipples, and you know, enjoy the. <laughs> Pleasures of my riches. Scrooge right? McDuck that shit. Huh? Scrooge McDuck that. Yeah, I want to dive into it. Yeah. Dive. Can I can I make this fucking Amazon check into a bunch of pennies that I can dive into? <laughs> In a vault. That's all I want. <laughs> That's all I want for this whole show. It's just that. That's all I've ever asked for, is just to be able to collect enough pennies from Amazon to swim into a vat of my own riches. <laughs> Uh, it's so funny because it means the same amount to me as if you told me I had a billion dollars in the bank account. Mm -hmm. You say, you got a billion dollars in the bank account. I'm like, can I have a bathtub full of pennies? Because <laughs> otherwise, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not impressed. I want to Scrooge McDuck this shit. Right. Anyways, was I talking about something? <laughs> Feedback. Yes, that. Another thing they think I might, I might have to apologize for is the fact that I drink at work all the time, <laughs> right? They say, Pete, you shouldn't drink at work. Your job is to be the, Kenny, the, the late night talk show host of the century or whatever my goal was. I forget now. It's the booze. Yeah. <laughs> That's but then I, I get all sauced up every time I do an it's episode. A, it's a rock star lifestyle. Especially when I have to confess all my like real emotion to charters at the end of this episode. This is like plaguing on my brain. Like I, had to, I get more drunk than I Mine am for too. a regular episode because I know I have to say real emotional things to Charters at the end. When I have to say Charters, you know, I'm not, I don't want to blow it. We're saving that to the end. But Jesus Christ, man, I hate doing this. <laughs> right? But I am going to do it because I am sorry as fuck to all you people that helped make this show great. <laughs> Feedback. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so Amazon check was good. Amazon, we did that. You know how to go to the website and click on the banners and all that shit. Click you know click. Norpac? I don't know if you heard of them. The beef people. Mm. What? The beef people. Oh. That's more like it, Paul. You know what Nathan Barry said? This is one of the feedback from him. He said, you can't hear Paul. Hey, you can hear me today. You better say, say this directly to Nathan. Say something directly to him in the microphone, because even if you can't hear it, I'll say, everyone else fucking heard it, Nathan. Hey, Nate, you, you can hear me. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, good, buddy. he cleared that up, eh? <laughs> hey, Nate, if you can hear that, then everything's fixed. Everything's fixed. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback. <laughs> you know who else gave us some? Just our two 
I'm going to get this whole segment now. We did all the sponsors except for Yarmy Electric. And I want to give Yarmy Electric an extra shout out because Yarmy Electric, their crew, fantastic. Yeah, they are. Michael, have they ever done work for you? Oh, all the time. When and I'm in a pinch, you know what I like to call? Yarmy Electric. You do, right? And you know what he does? He says, give me the important shit. The rest doesn't matter. Your <laughs> farm counts. I'll fix that stuff. You know, I like what he said to me one time. Hey, guess what? I don't want your fucking place to burn down and everyone to say, who did the electrical on it? <laughs> oh, fucking Yermi? Eh, how about you do things right, you dumbass? <laughs> yeah. That was a helpful hint from Yermi. Yeah. He's that a, was a helpful a, hint. He's a straight mm -hmm. shooter. Yeah. That's this kind of value you can't pay for. Yarmy Electric, if we don't get it right the first time, we'll get it right the second time. And if we don't get it right the second time... You can go fuck yourself. You want to know why? Because my cousin Derek never gets it wrong twice, you fucker. The problem's with you. <laughs> yeah, don't be a fucking idiot. Anyway, sorry. I got off topic there. That's all for sponsors, though, right? Clean Flow. Lube it up. I got to tell you, that fucking jingle you've created for Clean Flow... <laughs> They're going to be pissed at me. I mean, they're going to be <laughs> on my ass about that. Because they actually gave me a real check. I put it into my bank account. I said, don't worry, man. We're going to make ads for you, clean flow. And, and it's going to be good. And it's not going to be that. God damn it. Maybe we should get a harp. You know what I really should do when I make promises to customers is uh, tell the people that are going to do the work. <laughs> okay? Put it on them. Yeah, maybe you'd say, hey, guys, uh, heads up. I told him you're going to do a bunch of shit I don't know how to do. <laughs> That's funny because it's true, too. <laughs> mm. Spiky Ball Studio is the last sponsor of the show, and they, I, they're actually the closest to my heart. If you'd like to, buy some tickets for their next uh, live comedy performance, part of our spring comedy series, we have Tyler Morrison coming on April the 26th. It's a Friday. It's a rare Friday show for us. And uh, we're actually uh, starting to uh, get our summer lineup uh, worked out. And I'm really excited. We have our headliner already booked for June. July is, we're in, the, is in the works. August is in the, in the works. It's a bit of a buzz. Oh, I'm getting excited. There's a talk around town. Nothing is negative, only positive. I've had some of the some of the greatest characters in Delhi come trotting through my doors because they want to know what's going on in here. Are you the tiger, the uh, the guy at the crosswalk at the high school there. I had a nice chat with the guy yeah. from the crosswalk. Yeah, that's tiger. You mentioned it, tiger. Yeah. yeah, tiger, tiger Thompson. Man, oh man, I had another guy. Like he's a, he was great. He, he almost got run over twice the other day. He said couldn't wait till this week when it was the Blitz and those cops are going to get those motherfuckers. <laughs> that's what he told me. He's protecting yeah. our uh, youth. Yeah, it's nice to have a guy like Tiger protecting our youth. Yep. I don't know what the screening process is for crossing guards, but uh, is it head injury? <laughs> you must have one to be a crossing guard. Is that how it goes? Because I haven't met a crossing guard where I'm like, that's someone I entrust with the safety of my child, you know? <laughs> I've never met a crossing guard once where I'm like, yep. You take my kid across the street. <laughs> Very sharp. <laughs> oh. I choose you. <laughs> no. It would be like, uh, buddy, stay the fuck away from my kid, eh? <laughs> That's what it would be. Most of the time I see a crossing guard, I'm like, hey, dude, don't, don't get that close to the kids. Just, Please. Just take the hit. Yeah, take let the hit for the kids. I'd rather have them risk their life with traffic than with you fucking getting your hands near them. Okay? <laughs> That's all I'm telling you. <laughs> is it just me? No, no. <laughs> I'm at crossing I, I, I like will drive down a road and see a crossing guard, and I'll like size them up, and I'll be like, fuck no, man. You're not crossing the street with my kid. <laughs> it's one right? thing, they love their job, though. Mm. They are there. You know what? This is a judgment thing. It's never mm. judge a book by its cover, and I'm judging right. that book by a, a co its cover. That's right. Because as it turns out, they're dedicated to their job, just they're like dedicated. you said. They're dependable. And they're, very, and they're very commendable. And I don't know, they must go through some screening process where they look creepy, but they're not, <laughs> eh? as it turns out. But I don't know how you can do that, because I haven't found it at my place. I hired Shazma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Shaz. Anyways, that's, I give first I'm sorry to Shaz, see that? Even though he's been here longer. 
Uh, feedback, we have to go to the cheese lady and the Haitian. Oh, sorry, sorry. Is it time? Yeah, it is. Oh, it's time. <laughs> I'm just going to say, the cheese lady. One, two, three, four. We're checking on the cheese lady. On the cheese lady. Checking on the cheese lady. She's always on the run. Checking on the cheese lady. Cheese lady, check in on the cheese lady. She's always on the run. Check in on the cheese lady, on the cheese lady. Check in on the cheese lady. She's always on the run. Check in on the cheese lady, on the cheese lady. Teresa, what you done? What up, Teresa? What up, Teresa? Teresa, I'll tell you, she gave us two pieces of feedback on it. Double on feedback. Pod being this week, and you know what? She's been a longtime contributor of this uh, segment of the show. And uh, what she does is she shows not only support to us, but uh, to uh, all the events that go on in this area. She's been very helpful for a lot of the stuff that's going on in the area. And we can't thank Teresa from the Second Mouse in Delhi enough. If you like cheese, like charters, mm -hmm. <laughs> go see Teresa, the Second Mouse, and tell her the Dutch Hall sent you. And guess what she'll give you? I don't know, but probably a piece of cheese. Good guess. Hey, Teresa, if someone comes in there and says the Dutch Hall sent you, give me a little piece of cheese, eh? Why yeah. wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Tuck it in there. there. Tuck it in. You don't have to make it a big piece of cheese. Make it one that fell on the ground and then just put it in a different container. And then later on when the people right say Dutch that Dutch Hall thing, you say, give them the ground cheese, you know? <laughs> it's aged well. <laughs> no big deal, right? That's all I'm asking, Teresa. Don't. Don't deny me that request for the Christ. <laughs> you know how much fucking advertising we gave you, Teresa? Mm -hmm. And you're going to deny me the request to give him my fucking listeners ground cheese? <laughs> God damn it, Teresa. <laughs> <It's happening time. laughs> I'm sorry. Anyways, uh, she gave us two pieces of feedback this week, Teresa. <laughs> Let me get this right. I don't want to get any, lose any of the ha's. It says, ha ha. Ha ha. <laughs> you guys crack me up. LOL. It took me till Saturday to listen, but I always make time. Hashtag listening in Delhi. Ah, Teresa, nice. we never doubt that for a minute. You always make time for everybody. And we know. Oh, well, I'll get to the next one. Hmm. The next one she sent, which is also the same day, but later on. She says, I loved your skit in Delhi. Which I gotta tell you, Teresa. Your skit. I never did a skit in my life. I will never do a skit. <laughs> and uh, that particular choice of words, you. I'm not. I don't know what it is about skit, but you called what I my life's work skit, and it's just like <laughs> it like nails me in my heart, you know. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I loved your skit in Delhi. <laughs> But I can't wait to uh, see you perform in your own studio. Uh, hashtag take me to church. Hashtag small town love. Hashtag cheese lady. And you know what, cheese lady? Yeah. You didn't come to our first show here at Spiky Ball Studios when Mace Scaloni was headlining. It was the talk of the town. It was the, one of the greatest events that Dolly's ever seen, according to some people I heard outside the... Uh, the smoker's the, pit. Yeah, and the smokers pit there. They were letting off firecrackers saying, like, yeah, my, I was at the arena and I heard someone talking about it. It sounded all right. That was a pretty good review. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty accurate. And then, uh, anyways, you fucking missed it, cheese lady. And, uh, <laughs> but I know you're supporting another event in town and you took mm -hmm. your mom there and that sounds really sweet. So guess what? We'll give you a pass. But next month, I hope to see you here and maybe if you bring us some cheese. <laughs> We'll let you sit. We'll give you a good, a good uh, seat up front, and I'll sp throw you a spiky ball dollar. Oh. You know what that buys you? Prestigious. Booze. Yep. Maybe even something else. I don't know. Hey, you know what I did this week? I took our uh, merch item we have. It's uh, called a button before. But what I did was, because I'm wearing suit jackets for the show now to look more professional, so I put the, these things that used to be called buttons on the suit jacket, and guess what? Now they're lapel pins. Ooh, fancy boy. Yeah, worth way more. <laughs> All oh, yeah. people that came to the last show got these things as buttons. Uh, those things, you, you gotta steal on those, because next time when I try to sell them, they're gonna be lapel pins. 
Oh, yeah. That sounds way more expensive, for fuck's <laughs> sakes. I think that's the case. I like this one. Rooster sucks balls. Yeah, I got, I got a nice sticker on my guitar case now. Yeah, it says Rooster sucks balls? Right on there. Oh, you like that? I love it. That was a hot seller at the comedy show, more so than even Spiky Ball Studios or Live from the Dutch Hall. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. That was really surprising. Uh, was it? Yeah, I don't know why. Even people that don't know Dave will still support <laughs> trashing Dave, eh? It's which is a really, I, I just take it as a compliment to me. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I would say, honestly, this is true. I was picking up garbage where the smoker kids are. I got to tell you stories of these smoker kids at Dolly High School. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I bought a church that is like, apparently it's called North End in Dolly. North End. There's two ends of the high school, North End and South End. This didn't always exist. When my wife went to high school, this didn't exist. When Charter's wife went to high school there, this did not exist. North End and South End was not a thing. But when you went there, Paul, it did exist, right? Yes. So what, can you explain to us the legend in Delhi of North End and South End, what the difference was? Well, the North End was the, the like, jocks and the guys that would have their hoods up on the car and looking at their motor. Right. The South End was uh, us guys playing hacky sack, eating LSD and stuff. More of the, <laughs> on the South End, uh, by, the, so, by the pizza place? Yeah, South End. But then when they ripped that <laughs> church down, it kind of switched. I think now it's switched. The <laughs> yeah, the crowd. North Ends are more... Uh, uh, the, I think ours are the badass kids. <laughs> like, ours are the ones that, like, smoke and vape and, like blow up my shit with firecrackers, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, I'm not even kidding. We were bringing drywall into my church to try to do renovations in here, and uh, it's on April 1st, and the fucking... Uh, I go to open the doors so we can bring the drywall in, and there's freaking, ex like, sh like, shots fired, shots fired, you know? You drop down? Jesus Christ, you know? So I go and I'm like, I look around, the kids are just lighting off firecrackers, you know, in my garbage can that I put out for them so they wouldn't throw garbage <laughs> all over my property. And then, because uh, one of them asked me, he goes, hey, buddy, you got to, like, uh, put a garbage can on here. We're going to fuck your property up. I'm like, okay, I'll throw a garbage can out. That's where I got that one. The old me. Vorlex box. The old Vorlex <laughs> the barrel. The old Vorlex barrel, dude. <laughs> And then they go, then when the smoking lot changed, the same girl came to me and said, hey, buddy, you better fucking put an ashtray out there. We're going to throw butts all over your <laughs> steps. And then so I put an ashtray out there, but it was so cheap. I had a lot of sawdust up in the church from all the renovations, so I just put sawdust in the cans. <laughs> and then they would throw their cigarettes in there and it just started smoking, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then they loaded them with, uh, in one day, this what? is the first day, once again, that's the smart one, right? <laughs> yeah. Sawdust and the... Yeah. And then one day, they, they, this is the first day I had them out there. They, they, they filled them with, uh, with firecrackers and then lit them, lit them, like exploded them till it blew all the fucking sawdust out. There wasn't any sauce in the can at the end of the day. It was either burned or blown out of the fucking can. <laughs> and, and the one guy was like, I'm sorry, dude, but it's April Fool's Day. <laughs> so then it's a green light to do whatever yeah, the fuck Yeah, green light you want. to fuck your shit up, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to load your... And I can't help but like these kids. Like, I want to hate them, but I did, they just keep making me laugh. Like, they don't give two shits about me. <laughs> and the fact is that they're on my property, oh, fucking yeah. smoking cigarettes and blowing up my garbage can <laughs> I put out for them. And they're, they could give two shits. There was like four or five kids that when they saw me come out, they were like... Head for the hills, eh? They ran to the <laughs> school. Said, those are the weak ones. Yeah, those are the weak ones. These other ones that stayed were the ones that will stare me in the eyes and tell me they're going to fuck my shit up. These are the ones I'm interested in. These kids are the ones that I think are my kids. They're the ones that we can make a difference in their Disciples. lives. Eh? I want to be like, uh, like Hillary Swank, you know? <laughs> that, that just sits out in front of my church. Just tell, like... Like, I'm like a 50-year-old Pete just being cool with them, you know? <laughs> Saying, hey, Daddy-O, you ever come to the Church of Pete and God and stuff? It's not a cult. I swear it's not a cult. 
<laughs> oh, shit. This is still feedback? Oh, yeah. And we have one more thing to get to, and that's our good buddy, the Haitian Dwarf. He's oh. back, and I actually have a lyric. Really? Yeah. Wow. Old HD. Our old friend. You, you ready to rock, Pete? Yeah, one, two. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to bed we go. Anyways, every, since the very beginning of our episode, from the very first episode, we got feedback on iTunes from a particular listener who has been so supportive of our show. It's our good buddy, the Haitian Dwarf. Ah, yes. And he's back again. He entitles this piece of feedback, CR... I forgot about that one. CRTC approved. Kevin, I think this is about you. <laughs> Five stars. And this is what the Haitian Dwarf has to say. He says, I'm guessing someone is a Pearl Jam fan. Ah. And I was saying this is somebody that not only uh, listened, but also watched Kevin's enjoyment playing Even Flow last weekend, eh? Last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kevin's been on fire over there. I love it. Yeah, Kev, Kev Belanger and the Drums of the Nocturnal Emissions has taken this band to a new level that I think it's true. Is, uh, is underrated. Aww. It's a little bit of a spoiler alert for my apology to Kev. <laughs> but uh, I want to tell you, he's really turned it up a notch, and the people in the feedback universe are starting, <laughs> starting to notice. So thank you very much, Haitian Dwarf. We hope you're doing all right. And uh, one of these times we got to get you in here, buddy. we got to get you in, maybe do an, uh, have you in as a guest. I think it would be the least we could do for There's all the support. There's lots of room for twassing in here. <laughs> oh, I'd love to twass some. Right, right, yeah, right against the Velcro wall. It's like acres of room for twassing. What did you say, Dave? <laughs> Throw them against the Velcro wall. Twass them. Twass them against the Velcro? Yeah. You, you, do you feel that he is... Uh, what what uh, race is he, do you think? Haitian? <laughs> yeah, but what, what color do you think? Probably black. Probably black. I think so. Yeah, because if you go to Haiti and they see a white guy like you, they'll think you're the devil. Yeah, because they've never seen you really? before. Really? Well, they'll been try to, to stab you in the throat with a knife. Yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> question. Maybe we should El bring Diablo. him in. Yeah. So when you say Velcro, he's you have to make it clear that he's wearing a Velcro suit, and you're not just referring to his afro oh, is what God. sticks him to the wall. Because when you do that, Dave, it makes the whole show look bad. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> it makes us all look like we're like thinking like oh, you, yeah. and then we're not. Okay. So I don't see that sort of stuff. I don't think about that. I don't think, oh, I bet their, head would work, their hair would stick against a Velcro. I don't even know how you get away with that living in the world <laughs> that you live in. But I'm a, just a human being that's sitting here just trying to be a decent human being and get through a show here. I don't have anything. I could give a fuck. I could take a shit on the stage. I still got a show next week. It's my show, right? <laughs> and you, you got a job, profession, you're a master of industry. You're saying shit like that. I don't know, man. That's your choice. Not well, mine. thanks for the advice. Yeah, anyways. Just want to straighten that out. You're a good friend. <laughs> Helping one another. Thank you very much. If you guys would like to give feedback... <laughs> To this crock of shit, you would have to go to uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or uh, Live from the Dutch Hall Gmail com. Any way you look at it, uh, we, you can get us and we'll uh, listen to read it and then we'll uh, respond to it if we can. And thank you to everyone that's done that. And also for the Amazon contributors, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. This is the Christmas sales coming in and it is helpful to get us through. And I really do appreciate that. And for the sponsor, Clean Flow. You're the best. Lube it up. Yeah, they are. What up? Lube it up. And we're going to write something good for you other than that bullshit. Whatever <laughs> you do. Oh. Yeah, we're so now is the we're time of the there. program. We're all Sexy. done. We have to get to the time of the program where I have to make my amends to people. So we need to start with the very uh, the last person to become part of our team, Jordan Gortfa. Jordan, I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if I should stand up for this. I feel like, uh, I know there's a mic right there in front of uh, Shaz if you need one, but uh, Jordan, you've only been here a short time. 
But I have to apologize. This is one of the easiest apologies I've ever made. Um, <laughs> uh, Don't sugarcoat it. We've treated you like shit since you have arrived here. <laughs> Like, you must think it's some sort of initiation at this point where we just fucking... You do nothing but nice things for us, and uh, we don't even tell them there's a fucking show <laughs> at all. We haven't included him on our Facebook group. We haven't done anything to show that he's been helpful to our program. And yet, he shows up week after week and does a fantastic job. Jordan and I apologize from the uh, bottom of my heart. I just want to feel like part of the team. It's, it's all well, I want. You're almost there. Like, to, <laughs> in a month or two. I just want to dance. <laughs> I just want to dance. That's it. And also, I'm sorry I doubted your ability on the stage. I think that uh, this spotlight that Shazma has shone upon you right now is something that we'll see a lot more of with Jordan Gorfa. Who agrees? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're not going anywhere, boys. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Apology accepted. Thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you very much, Jordan. <laughs> Woo. Next can... on the list, we got a lot of people to get to, so I got to whip through these. I'm, I'm sorry because they're so heartfelt. The next apology goes to Amanda. Amanda oh. Rose Grant. Amanda Rose Grant, you've been working on our program for quite some time, and I haven't even told people that you exist. <laughs> <laughs> Not even once. Never even shown. Never even shown you the respect of telling people that you're actually here. But I apologize, Amanda. You've done a great job. We love having you here, and you've, been, and you've made us all better. So thank you so much, Amanda, for being Woo! part of our team. Yeah. Woo! The next to come, I think Ty Sh uh, Tyler Shazma, wasn't it? Or to be officially a member of the team? Yep. Tyler Shazma, I guess, would be the next one. Shaz. I have to apologize uh, a million uh, times uh, to Tyler Shazma. What I've done, uh, what I've done time and time again to Tyler Shazma, is just take for granted uh, that once he took over the reins of being director of this program, that I was just going to not think about all the stuff I did for five years on this program, <laughs> and just like let him take it over with no communication whatsoever. And have him continually like uh, like awkwardly pick my brain to make this show better every week. Tyler Shazma, uh, I just can't thank you enough. I'm sorry if I haven't uh, been appreciative of your efforts. That's Woo! it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, was there an apology in there? <laughs> Did I say I'm sorry? I said I'm sorry that mm -hmm. I haven't been more appreciative of your efforts. Oh, I, I feel like you appreciate my efforts. Okay, then I'm not sorry at all. Fuck you. No, you no. I've done everything fine with you, Shaz. I don't know what no, this was. Find something to apologize about. All right, I'll go again. Okay, Shaz, I've never accepted your mustache. <laughs> and I. Well, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> I know. And it's always been a thing between you and I. I always think it's ridiculous. You always think it's cool. It's the coolest thing about me. <laughs> I know, but I'm never going to... Because of the time I was born, you have to understand, the people that still had mustaches when I was in high school were losers, you know? <laughs> and then, like, I can't accept it when it comes back to your younger generation. You're growing them, you're looking cool with your mustaches, but... It's not cool. It's not cool? No. It's just the only thing I can grow on my face. You can't grow a beard? No, I can't grow Pussy. a Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> what a loser. That's why I have a mustache. Oh, I'm sorry about your uh, beard and stuff, Shaz. I accept that apology. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 and uh, the, the next on the show to apologize for, uh, Kev Belanger. Hey, Kevin. The CRTC required Frenchman in the corner, Kev. What's going on? Uh, Kevin, uh, number one, I make you speak out of a Tom mic. <laughs> that's that's bad, right? Snare drum microphone. Oh, we're good. Is it a snare drum mic? Uh, yes, whatever good. that is. I was that was still like, that's that's check, 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 diminishing check, check, check. your contribution as a human being. <laughs> <laughs> to say you're as good as a Tom, you know. It's they're good mics though. They're better than all the vocal microphones. Oh really? Yeah yeah. Oh. So I'm it's, not, it's okay. Goddamn bad apology again. Mm -hmm. Now I gotta dig deeper. Kevin, let me think. What have I done that's been Kevin. harmful to Kev? My sweet Kev. I would hold him in my arms and cradle him to keep him well. I don't know what I've done wrong to my poor Kev. 
Uh, Kev, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't talk to you as much as I should and telling you what to do, but you're so good at things, I just think you'd be better at just doing them yourself, you know? <laughs> so that's why I don't get in the way of it. I hope it doesn't, uh, hope you forgive me. I forgive you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I got that one out of the way. That wasn't as hard as fucking Shaz, man. He made me work for it. And who's next? Uh, the next guy to arrive on the show, was it Wes or Steve? Wes, Whiskey Wes Higgins. Now, this, this is the easiest apology ever, Wes, because uh, I know exactly what I'm apologizing for you. We never give you a microphone. Week after week, we never give you a microphone. And uh, you know what? Every time we have given you one, you've been fucking gold, dude. Gold. I don't ever use it. Well, you don't sing, but when you talk and you tell people, tell us about all the things you hate and like how you're angry you are at things, it's fucking hilarious, man. Yeah, I'm pretty fucking angry. Sometimes. It is great, huh? I am pretty angry sometimes. Yeah, you are angry, man. You're an angry fucking dude, and it's hilarious. To listen to. <laughs> you know how many times people go to work every day and then you come home and you're like, "Fuck, the world fucking sucks, man." You like to hear West goes talking about how the girl from Pizza Hut was a cunt, you know? <laughs> That's what I want to see about Wes, you know? And how are you going to get that out of a show if you don't give him a fucking microphone, right? <laughs> Remember when Steve was right beside me in the du old Dutch hall and he had a microphone, yep. right? And he said only boring shit into it, <laughs> right? Not much has changed. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> see, oh, Steve, right it's going to be really easy for me to apologize to you. <laughs> Hey, Steve, remember what I just said? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry. I was being on purpose just to apologize. It, it just tickled me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. And uh, what have I done with you, Wes? Do you forgive me? Yeah, all's forgiven. Yeah, yeah, thanks, man. And uh, Steve, uh, yours is done too, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> How do you feel, Steve? Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> no, Steve, we, you are a reluctant German for a reason, and then we still make fun of you for being German. Though the true nature of your name, the reluctant German, suggests that you're reluctant about being German, therefore you don't support the German like principles of uh, genocide against the Jews and all that stuff you guys did? Yeah, that's correct. Right? So even though you're like by blood, the same people that did these atrocities in human uh, history, you know, I apologize for bringing you in that because you yourself, as far as I know, have never committed genocide. <laughs> that's correct, yes. Right? Yep. So I'm sorry, Steve, if I've implied that you've committed genocide. All right, thanks, Pete. <laughs> All right, that's another one done. Paul, are you the next one? Yeah, Paul. Paul, I got to tell you, <laughs> this is a hard one to apologize for. <laughs> because sometimes I feel like I should be harder on you. I really do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want to. But I'm afraid that you're going to punch me in the face. It's <laughs> probably a good thing, though. Yeah. Because <laughs> you ever seen his hands? They're like frying pans. Yeah, he'll eh? kill you. Yeah, if you can stay away from that overhand right, you know, you have a chance. But if it catches you, you're fucking going to bed. <laughs> Good night, You are Jim having Kite. a nighttime nap. Yeah. Right? And the thing about him, too, is he takes a punch, too. You can't just punch him. That ain't no way to do it. You got to find his weakness, like a, some sort of a slip vertebrae. <laughs> and you got to, like, push it into his, like, uh, his, like, right. uh, his spinal him. column until it pinches a nerve and he's, like, paralyzed, yeah. you know? Go That's the, the only out. way to beat Paul. You Peace. can't punch it out of him. You can't, like, make him feel pain until he stops. He's like a bear, you know? You got to fucking your mind fuck this guy to the ground, you know? Years of fighting him, I learned that. Because even as a kid, he would still hurt you. You know, you might win the fight because you're way bigger. I was three years older. But uh, anyways, I'm not apologizing for any of that shit, man. That's just growing up, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me and you growing up. We've already talked about that. That's all the water under the bridge. What I want to say, Paul, is that I thank everyone here at this comedy show for all the work that was done to pull this thing off to make it a great event. I thanked your wife. I thanked your son. 
But I didn't make a point of thanking you publicly in front of the crowd that was there. And what I want to say is I'm sorry because you're a great part of making that a great event. And we're doing it monthly here at Spike Ball Studios. And Paul, we could never have got to where we are today without your help. And uh, together, we've been a great team. And I want to yeah. thank you for being here. Hey. Yeah. I just better get the bartending job. Yeah, you got first crack at it. All right, deal. He was yeah. fucking nailing it. He did a great job that night, but he's got one uh, thing I have to make sure uh, that he uh, does. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I identify. And uh, <laughs> who's next? Michael? I think me, yeah. Michael. Uh, Michael. Michael. Michael, I don't know if you know, but I've been yelling every time I pass your farm with my children. I like to yell at you and tell you what to do with your oh, crop. Oh, that's what that sound is. <laughs> yeah. And I always say, Michael knows what I'm saying, because the kids think I'm crazy, because I go, I, last, <laughs> that was yesterday, we were driving past your farm, I'm like, I just kept yelling, Michael, <laughs> tend to your greenhouses, Michael. Uh, I was in trying to greenhouses. Tend to the greenhouses. You need tending. The fans were on. They're sprouting. They're sprouting. Like, and then the kids are like, what are you doing? And he goes, he knows. Michael knows. <laughs> I did know. Yeah, you felt was the tingling in your ears? I was tending. Yeah. He has to tend to them this time of year. You don't want to not tend to those greenhouses. Shit will happen, right? But, Michael, for two or three weeks now, <laughs> you have uh, been telling me that you have something to contribute to the show as far as an announcement goes. And then I keep saying to you, like, I don't care because it's about me. Remember that? Yes. And then you go, no, but you guys can play with it if you want. I meant to say it a while ago, but you don't have to really do it. And then I was like, oh, no, no. Uh, this show's about me, Michael. It's not about fucking you, right? <laughs> Remember all that? Yep, I've learned that. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, and then uh, so I want to say sorry, because that's wrong. It's not about me. It's about, uh, it's just the pressures of being, like, the host of the show and all that. But, like, to be tr truthful, I want to give you as much time as you can right now to make any announcement you want for the entire listening audience of Live from the Dutch Hall. Well, I'm going to be honest, uh, you put it off so long that I forget what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> and that uh, seriously seems to happen. You always tell me about the great ideas I had after the show, <laughs> like framing the pictures. Apparently that was my idea. Yeah, it was his idea. Yeah, I forget all my good ideas, so I'm going to just accept this apology and yeah. uh, just be happy to be part of the team. Awesome. Yep, all that good. Made, it puts us both off the hook on that Yeah, one. we're all good. <laughs> Woo. That's the thing about apologizing to a drinker. You can really get away with animal saying anything. It's, it's a bit gray. Yeah, we're like, yeah, that might have been me. Yeah, we're still good. I didn't shit on your floor. I might have shit on your floor. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't really mean to. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't do that on purpose. <laughs> like, I if didn't. I was really thinking straight, I rarely shit on people's floors. <laughs> well, it's not me and you that I'd be so worried about. It's my better half that might get you. Oh. If you pooped on my floor. Oh, I would never do that to you, Michael. Yeah, that's a good choice. I was talking about Let's chairs. make that clear. I was talking about chairs. <laughs> hey, you had a picture when you were a kid about uh, you shitting on the floor, <laughs> yeah, right? What a picture to take. What yeah. kind of parent takes a picture of their kid? She showed it to me like 10 times when I was over there. Oh like God. she forgot she showed it to me the last time. She's like, hey, Pete, I know something you'll like. This is a picture of chairs when he's four when he shit on the floor. <laughs> I thought that was a good idea. And then she takes a picture of you. It's you just... Staring, like pulling on the sh piece of shit on the kitchen floor when you're like four years old. <laughs> Pants around my ankles. Yeah, you're just laughing. Like, I look, I took a shit on the floor, mom. That's hilarious, right? It's right in the front of the photo album now. Yeah. And you know what happened right after your mom put the camera away? She fucking beat you with a rolling pin. <laughs> <laughs> right? Classic. It was fucking 1978. <laughs> Charles got his ass handed to him. Oh, yeah. Back Wind then, eh? spoon. Huh? The old wooden spoon. She goes, let me take a picture to show how stupid you are, and then I'm going to beat you until you never do it again. Yeah. That was the 70s, man. Fucking great time to grow up. Great time to grow up. I missed out. You missed out, Michael. Maybe you don't have to pay for the, the uh, uh, therapy. Just a bit outside. Huh? You missed it. Did you, get, you didn't get beat up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> have you ever met my sisters? And I'm not uh, ashamed oh, to admit yeah. that. That's the worst is when you get beat up by your siblings because you can't see it coming. Well, especially when it's sisters. You're the only boy. And then you can't even defend yourself because then you look like a dick. Yeah, you have to wait till you grow bigger than them. <laughs> and they then still, still probably could kill yeah, me. Even yeah. then, yeah. I wouldn't mess with your sisters now. No. Any of them. Well, you're right in saying that. I would fight you over any of your sisters. Good choice. 
Yeah, if I had to pick pick one of the four bull kids to fight, I would be like Michael. Yeah, I've had that said to me quite often. Yeah, I f- I feel bad, but it's it's the right choice. It's the right choice. Yeah, I don't blame. Because even if you beat me up, you would still know would ki- yeah. when it's time to like let me just That's lie right. on the ground. Your other your sisters would like carve pieces of my face off and like shove it back in my throat, make me eat myself, Cut you know, your just balls humiliate off. me. Yeah, like it would be real bad. Really, really like punish me, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't vicious. mess with any of those girls. Scare the shit out of me a little I, bit. I, uh, I love I'm, them to death. I love gonna, all of them. Yeah, I'm not going to say which one it is, but uh, I've had a couple hockey parents that I've met along the way in the few uh, weeks that I missed recently that have told me, like, legit grown men, I'm scared of y- your sister. Yeah. Like, she would, if she wanted to, she could beat the shit out of me. And I'm like, yeah, you're exactly right. You should feel that. Yeah, way. and and and, and you, well, you have to know about Michael's sisters too. They're not like uh, brutes. No, they're not like people you'd look and like. Oh, look at these ogre women that are like just hulking brutes. You know, no, they're beautiful, gorgeous like women. They're like uh, like very attractive uh, women. You know, the blonde hair is flowing. And they're like uh, women that are like uh, like. Uh, uh, you know, Van Dyke blood uh, through and through. Uh, I, you know, I, I, not to dismiss your other side, but you know what I'm saying. The yeah. good looks all comes from the Van Dyke. Yeah, exactly. No argument. Yeah. Marius will admit that. No argument there. Yeah. And then, uh, so, but you see the Van Dyke beauty, beauty in them, and then you're like, oh my goodness, how can they be so vicious where they'll tear your face off, bash your head against a bumper, and then go bite your cheek, you know? And <laughs> yeah, then, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then uh, it still I means to happen. So that's all I'm telling you. You never know in Delhi. Watch your step. You know, you might think you're, you might think you're safe. One of these fucking gorgeous uh, sisters of Michael can come out and fucking tear your face off. They right? remember. They remember anything. They watch your step around them. That's, right. that's my bit, my favorite line from Norwich, which we talked about on last week's show, is when I told him that Uncle Marius beat those guys up, and then and, and when I realized it was kind of true. It's a hundred percent true. That's why it was funny. <laughs> that was even more funny. Yeah. Like I was just doing it as a stab great. in the dark that it was true, and then I'm like, "Oh, it probably really is true." And then when I heard everyone going like, "Oh, <laughs> I hate that guy," did you tell your dad that? Then? No, I haven't told him yet. Oh, you should tell him. I just want to get a kick out of it. Eh? He would love it. Like he's gonna love it. Oh yeah, because you'll be in the good books forever. Oh yeah, me not that a, you're not. Me and Uncle Marius will be in the great when I call him out is uh, make all those people like mad at me like that. He's like, how yeah. did I not get beat up, eh? Yeah. You left, and when I looked at both you cocksuckers when I was uh, when I said <laughs> it, you both were waving me off like, don't fucking look my way. No, you exactly. Son of a bitch. I didn't believe it. You I was too, t- both of you. And, and you then we had to go up there with you. Show our allegiance. That's right. I was like hiding behind yeah, yeah, drum, yeah. Kev's drum set. I knew like, you were, yeah. Fuck, I really got to go up and That was like the this. humiliating thing where I'm like, now all you cocksuckers have to come up here and say you're with me. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually punishment to all of you. Wes, you weren't there for it. Yeah, I still owe you. Lucky, Wes. Yeah, I have to wait until the next uh, second celebration of life <laughs> where my friend who's got a sick sense of humor who passes away uh, does something that I have to go and make all of the people that shouldn't be at a second celebration uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's just hope that never happens. Yeah, maybe ever. that will never happen again. It's a rare occasion, I think. <laughs> and then, uh, so anyways, I have one last person to apologize to before the end of our program, and that is our good buddy, Dave the Rooster. Oh, wait, no, no. Jane Van Dyke. Oh, uh, yeah. Because before Charters... Don't forget was the first guest. Uh, we had the support of my loving wife, Jane uh, Van Dyke. Jane, um, I can't thank you enough for just letting me go forward with this because if on paper, this idea seems ridiculous. Uh, and uh, anybody uh, who is married to a guy with an idea like this uh, would uh, convince him otherwise nicely that he's lost his mind and should stop doing this. But you did not do that. And uh, for as much grief as I've given you, I can't say I'm sorry to you enough. Jane, I just love you. Thanks so much for all you've done for me. Woo! And that brings us to you, Dave. The first guy, first episode, Dave the Rooster Charters. Dave the Rooster Charters, everybody. Let's hear it for him. Because then we have to make up for it. 
All right, Charters. I'm going to tell you something. We have done a lot of things to you since the beginning of life from the Dutch Hall. Number one, we tricked you for the very first episode. Then we managed to kind of make you a whipping boy of the show for quite some time, to the point where many listeners have uh, white knighted you, even our own cheese lady. Is uh, white knighted you to the point saying, ease up on Dave Charters. He n does not need your abuse anymore. It's gone too far, right? We went so far, Charters, as to create lighters that said, fuck Charters on it. <laughs> Uh, we couldn't make them anymore. They were gone right away. And people still will throw, well, people you don't know. I've seen this happen. <laughs> people you don't know, put them in your face. And they show you fuck charters to your face. <laughs> You've never met this person before. Yeah. Right? There's, there's like, a, <laughs> they're laughing at you as they put fuck chart, like your own name, in it's your just, own face. I've really seen something. that happen. Right? <laughs> that was my fault, right? <laughs> Uh, you know, I got kids at Delhi High School right now wearing buttons that say fuck charters, you know? They don't even know who you are. They just know the legend of you, you know? They're just like, they're out there just hating the idea of you, you know what I mean? Like, they don't even, they don't even know what you are. They just hate the idea of you, and that's that's because of me, you know? It's quite a phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. Hey. But, uh, <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know how to apologize to this fucking guy, is the thing. Hey, there's way more. Keep going. The oh, list goes sorry. on. The list is, we, we uh, not only made a, bought an oversized blow-up doll that we put a mustache and glasses on. <laughs> Mike may or may not have been playing with her nipples earlier today. <laughs> I think they're... Right here? <laughs> little, little <laughs> Who zipped her back up? I did. It wasn't. <laughs> it's not right. It wasn't right for the whole program to see the, the balloon's tits. Oh, God. <laughs> it's like yeah. putting on a wall over here. Yeah. It's a little, just a little mommy. spackling. So, Pencil erasers. Yeah. It's not respectable. We did that uh, in effigy of you, I think. And we also created a puppet in your likeness, which we plotted with your children for years and then uh, pulled off by creating and then uh, using it as some sort of an alter ego in order to uh, ridicule you for your life choices. That puppet is really something. It you is really something. And Dave, my apology to you is so strong that I've went and done a gesture that's uh, because this puppet is a hit, man. The rooster puppet is the star of Life from the Dutch Hall right now. The talk in the Life from the Dutch Hall, like, uh, message boards, you know, like, where all the kids are on there fucking talking Dutch Hall shit, you know? Blogs and whatnot. Yeah, blogs and whatnot. All the blogs and whatnot are all centered around the rooster. The rooster puppet. He's the fucking star of the show. And, you know, I heard what the rooster said to you last week. <laughs> when he popped through my window. <laughs> and uh, Dave, that was hurtful. That was hurtful stuff, what he was saying to you. You've, you're a good man. You made a lot of good choices in your life. What I want to do is show you a gesture. What I'm going to do to you is that for this week and this week alone, what I've done is I've locked the rooster puppet into a box, <laughs> and he will not be showing up for this week's episode. Oh. I fuck Thank you guys. <laughs> You cucks can't keep me away. I'll get out. It's 1983 all the time. <laughs> the rooster down. <laughs> For this week alone, Charles. It's like the gimp in there. Yeah. This week alone, he's typing that box. But when we let that fucker out of the box, I'm not responsible for what he's going to do this program. That's all I got to tell you. I'm doing this for you this week, but we're all going to pay for this in the future. <laughs> you know that? That fucker's not gonna be happy about being in that goddamn box. That's crazy. Should have ball gagged him. <laughs> Who's he gonna take it out on? Most likely you. <laughs> well. Is that my fault? Should I apologize for that to you, motherfucker? <laughs> Maybe you should show up. You know, you're not even a part of this show. I shouldn't be apologizing to you because I fired you, right? <laughs> That's I fucking. True. You're still here, 
and I fired you. Clearly, you missed a month of shows, right? <laughs> Did we not all make this rule? Boy, you missed right. a month of shows, you're fired, right? Yep. This guy fucker keeps showing up. <laughs> First week, I'm like, oh, I'll call you a guest. Second week, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to do. He's still here, <laughs> right? Now, this week, it's just ridiculous. I'm, I'm, I'm apologizing to a guy who shouldn't fucking be here. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. No, that's okay. Okay, good. So we've done all the apologies for this episode. This has been live from the Dutch Hall. I think it's been a fun show, right? Yeah, yeah. pretty good. Yeah, we've given you your entertainment dollar. Clear if you'd air. like to, look us up at Spiky Ball Studios or live from the Dutch Hall, uh, dot com. We have all the information for all our upcoming shows. We have uh, Tyler Morrison on uh, April 26th. Ooh. Email us now at spikeballstudios at gmail.com to get your tickets. It's going to be a heck of a show. We expect it to sell out. Tickets are going fast. But until next week, we will see you NT. See you next Thursday.